Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is by the incredible Tales from the Cryptid, over on Reddit No Sleep. As ever, please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled There's a creature in my house and with a voice like razor blades. Let's get straight into that. Well, it's here. I don't know where. I don't know how, but it's here. It's inside the house. I've done fucking everything. I've called Todd. I've called Alexi. I even called a goddamn exorcist. And none of them believe me. None of them so much as offer to help. And now it's Halloween, and it's stronger than ever. I can feel it moving through the house, like a great darkness suffocating our light from everything. It's already taken my business partners, John and Erica. It's already taken so many others. I'm upstairs in my bedroom closet. I've been here for three hours now, and I'll be here for three more if that's what it takes. I don't know if this thing hates the sun, but, but it's never bothered me during the day, only at night, always at night. There's a creak and a groan outside, on the steps and I feel the house tremble at something monstrous moves through it. My breath hitches in my chest and I remind myself to be still, to be quiet. I just need to make it until sunrise, just a little longer. And then the voice follows, low raspy and inhuman. So many lies, so many lives in so little time. It's singing a song, but the tune is broken. Each word scrapes along my ears like a razor blade, cutting deep into my mind and pulling back memories. It sang before it took John. It was only a single word then. Coming. It had hummed, and we had all just thought we were hearing things. And now John's everywhere. There are pieces of him littered throughout the house. Fingers and toes, and intestines and eyes. I weep silently into my hands, and I can smell John's blood on them. I can hear his screams. I can taste my cowardice for not doing more to help him for not even trying. Oh, how good it'll feel to finally go. The thing sings, and I wince in pain at every word. God damn it hurts to listen to. Warmth flows from my ears, and I realize they are bleeding. Just one more, and then the song ends. I gasp in agony as more memories tear themselves from my mind. Erica, her and I had separated in the panic of John's death. I had run up here, trying to call the police, but my phone was haywire. And that's when I heard it come for her in the basement. The house creaked and groaned with the creature's every step. One more will do. It had sunk, descending the basement stairs. One more makes two. I only heard her scream for a moment and then it faded to silence until a thing laughed. Guttural, monstrous. It echoed throughout the house, shaking the foundations and rattling the old wooden frame. Where it laughed and it laughed. All that we need, all that we eat, all hail the coming of All Hallows Eve. Now it's moving towards me. Oh, it's getting closer. I can feel its every step, its every movement. 
and it passes through the house with tremors of violence. Just one more, it sings again, and then the song ends. Oh, it's outside the bedroom now. My ears are bleeding badly. I can't take it anymore. I can't take the sound. I clamp my eyes shut, trying to ignore the agony of its voice, trying to ignore the panic rioting in my body and the floorboards creak outside the closet. And I smell something rotten, vile and grotesque, something dead. And there's a low groan as the closet door slides open. Looky, looky. It sings, discordant and tuneless. Wouldn't you like to see something spooky? Well, I don't look. Agony tears through my ears. They're being split open from the inside out and blood is pouring from my head in a river down my jaw. And I whimper and something leans close to me. Oh, the smell of rot is nearly unbearable now and I gag and wretch, but but I refuse to open my eyes. I can't. If I see it, then it's real. If I see it, then, then I die. And something grips my wrist, something cold and damp and loose with flesh. And it pulls me from the closet and I howl in terror and fear. Oh, it's taking me somewhere. P please, I sputter. P please don't. My leg cracks as it drags me down the steps and I scream. My eyes are clamped shut but I feel myself moving through pieces of John as the creature pulls me through the house. And finally it stops. I'm hyperventilating now, my chest rising and falling in rapid succession. No, no, no! I mutter again and again. Yes, it says and this time, it isn't singing. It tussled me by my arm and I felt my shoulder snap backwards out of its socket. I tumbled down the old wooden stairs, my head smashing against the steps, my wrist snapping in half as I finally collide against the landing. I groan, tears and blood streaming down my face. Looky, looky. It sings, though its voice is now guttural and horrible. It grabs me by the back of my hair, pulls my head up and reaches its fingers down to my eyelids. Wouldn't you like to see something spooky? It pulls them open and I see our studio. I had cameras pointing towards the cages, ten of them, each filled with pieces of the children, each a tapestry. The light in the basement is dim, but I can see Sally's witch hat, still tied to her head. I can see Michael's werewolf paw still on his dismembered hand. I lick my lips, and there, in the back is yonder Cinderella costume, the glass slippers still upon one of her feet. And the thing throws me forward, and I crash against the still bars of the cage. And when I look up in a daze, I see Erica's corpse, my dear filmmaker, mutilated and cut into pieces. Her eyes are missing, and her hand is stuffed halfway down her throat. I lean forward and I vomit, only then realizing that I'm lying in a pool of her blood. So many lies, so many lives, in so little time. The creature sings. I hear the click of a button being pressed and see a red light hovering in the darkness. The camera is recording. Looky, looky. Please, I rasp. The house creaks and groans as it steps forward and my body scrambles backwards on its own accord. Please! Wouldn't you like to see something spooky? Wow, 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 wow. Awesome shot, but equally terrifying story there from the incredibly talented Towers from the Cryptid over on Reddit. 
Please, as ever, guys, do take a second to click the link in the description box below. That'll take you over to the Tales from the Cryptid page. Don't forget to smash a up vote and possibly leave a nice comment, as it really does, no doubt, boost their morale and help them build their presence as writers on the Reddit platform. And of course, you know the drill here. Please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. If you're an aspiring writer or just want to have a crack at things, want to get in touch with myself at the usual email as on screen, which is DMT Forest of Fear at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. I hope everybody's holding up okay this week, getting stuck into whatever it is that you do, studying or work, and above all, keeping fit and focused as possible during these testing times. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry. <laughs>